Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today I'll be showing you how to resize your Linux storage whenever you have some unallocated space. I'm using Gparted right now to view one of my hard drives and the one I'm viewing is this current Ubuntu system that I'm using. Notice I've uh, cloned it over and in some cases when you clone things over, let's say to a bigger disk, you're left with some unallocated space at the end because the old disk might have been smaller your partitions were configured against that disk size so for example here i have around 62.7 gigs for root file partition around 8 gigs for a swap file and finally all that unallocated space that i want to grow my system into some of you might not have the swap partition this is for older systems that used to use swap partitions i'll show you how to move things around so we can take advantage of using the unallocated space. First off, you can't make any changes in your system because these disks are mounted. So if I wanted to, let's say resize and move something, I can't do it. I can't change these numbers and I cannot resize. So what I did is I downloaded and installed a bootable disk creator. I'm using Belena Etcher today. I downloaded it from the web. I'll put a link in the description below so you can also do the same. And then next we're gonna need a live image I'm using Ubuntu, so I'm gonna create a live image of Ubuntu. It'll just make things easier for me. You can do this across any Linux distribution. It all works the same. We'll use the same tools. Select whatever live image you want. I'm gonna download this now. Save the file. I'm using Ubuntu 20.04. After I have the image downloaded, I'll launch and use the Belena Etcher app. You could of course use Rufus, UNEP, boot, and whatever can make a bootable disk, but you absolutely need one in order to access and resize your storage disk. This is because in a live environment, your disk won't be mounted and you have free access to it. And now I'm going to flash from the file. The file is the one I just got done downloading. Here I have Ubuntu 20.04, the desktop version, and I'm gonna use this as a live environment. So I'm gonna click on here and then select a target. Well, I only have one USB in the system and I already have a live image on it, but select a USB, CD, or DVD where you want to overwrite the contents of so you can make your live disk and then select it. Once you're done, select flash and give yourself administrative privileges so you can flash the contents onto the USB. After it's done flashing, then what we need to do is actually boot into that live environment. How do we do this? Well, restart your system and boot into BIOS so you can select the proper USB to boot first. So as my system's rebooting, I'm gonna be asked to enter BIOS through F2 or delete, at least from my computer. Yours might be something different. Make sure to look it up for your particular motherboard. Here we go, F2 or delete to enter UEFI BIOS. And now I'm in my BIOS. You'll notice that I have my USB right here underneath the Ubuntu system I have installed on my disk. So I'm going to move this USB live environment above Ubuntu. That way I'm loading into here and not here. Some of you might not have this view, so go into advanced mode, or if you see some sort of tabs at the top, look for boot order or boot priority, and then select your boot option number one to be the USB that you just got done flashing. After you're done with that, you can save and exit out of your BIOS and that should boot you into the proper live environment so we can start making edits to our storage space. Here we go, I'm being asked what I wanna select. I'm just gonna select Ubuntu from the live environment. That way I can load into the live environment. All right, and this is a great sign. I loaded into the correct USB. So I have try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. I don't want to install Ubuntu. Instead, I'm going to hit try Ubuntu to get to the live environment. This might look the same, but it is a live environment because right here we can see we can install Ubuntu. That's not what we want to do. And now we want to start up a disk management tool. It's called Gparted. If you don't have it on your system, use your software store on the live environment to grab Gparted. A lot of live environments come with Gparted because it's such a great tool. Ubuntu does. So that's why I like using Ubuntu as my live environment to make edits to disks. Otherwise, you can get it through a terminal by using a package manager. For example, here we'd use sudo apt install Gparted. Press enter and you should be on your way. Okay, once you have Gparted on the system, launch it. And this is what it looks like. Great. The first thing I'll tell you is if you have multiple disks in your system, make sure you have the proper disk selected. You don't want to be making changes to the wrong disk. You'll ruin it. So go to the top right corner, select the drop down and select the proper disk. I know mine's 120 gigs. That's what we were looking at on the actual system earlier. So now I have the proper disk selected. I can see I have a root file partition, a swap partition, and a bunch of unallocated space. So now, how do I grow this? 
Well, if I right click and go to resize and move, I can move now, but I can't extend. So why is that the case? Well, swap is in the way. Some of you might not have swap in the way and you can simply resize into the unallocated space. And having a swap partition is kind of useless at this point because you can create a swap file. I have a video on this and I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna make a swap file instead of a swap partition. So either way, what we first have to do is go down to our swap partition and make sure to turn swap off. After we have swap turned off, we can now make an edit to the swap partition. We can resize or move it, and I can move it towards the end of the disk, and that's exactly what I wanna do. So I'll do that, just move the entire contents over to the end. You can also specify all this information in megabytes below and then hit resize or remove. It says moving the partition might cause your operating system to fail to boot. That's okay. It's just saying if you did something, let's say with the EFI system partition, you could screw your system up because it wouldn't know how to boot into it anymore. Moving swap is fine. And now look at that. We have swap being shown at the end. Mine is eight gigs. You can also completely delete swap if you want, just by hitting delete. I'm gonna revert that because I don't wanna delete swap. I'll keep it at the end here. I'll keep my swap partition. But if you do delete your swap partition, you can check out that video that I suggested in order to create a swap file and just make things a little easier for you in the future. Otherwise, for those of us with only unallocated and root file space, let's extend the root file partition. Mine's ext4 formatted. You can either select it up here in gparted or below. Right click, hit resize and move. Now we can resize the entire partition in order to fill up the rest of the disk and then we can hit resize and move. I love using gparted because it just makes things a little easier. Notice that there's a little bit of space left here at the end, which is a little goofy, but that's just because of how the system allocates its byte bounds. So it just so happened that it left a little bit of unallocated space at the end. This is fine, not a big deal. You could try getting it perfect, but I don't think you'll be able to. Anyways, once that's done, you can hit the apply all operations. Make sure you did not mess with the EFI system partition. If you did, you're doing something wrong. You might screw up your current install. Always back up your data before making any changes to your disks. I'm pretty confident in this, so I'm gonna select the check mark to apply all operations. It says, do you want to apply the pending operations? Yep, apply. It's gonna take a few moments as things are moved around and resized after they're done. I'll hit close and notice I have SDA one, two, three. Everything looks good. We have just this little bit of unallocated space, not a big deal. Your balance might end up being perfect and you might not have any at all. You could also have your Linux swap completely gone, but we have to do one more thing to the Linux swap since it was moved. We turned swap off. Now we need to turn it back on. And once it's back on, then the system will recognize that swap partition as swap again. Very good, you've moved things around. You're ready to boot back into your system at this point. Let's exit out of Gparted and restart the system. Go back into BIOS and select your Ubuntu system to load instead of the live Ubuntu environment or whatever live environment that you are currently in. So I'm restarting things now and I'm going to remove that media. That way I don't accidentally boot into the wrong thing. And I'm booting into my BIOS once more. Just to confirm, I have the proper boot priority selected. So here's my disk here, Ubuntu, great. That's the one I wanted. So I'm just going to continue on. And it automatically picked that one because I removed my USB in the process of starting my computer up. All right, I got Grub in front of me. I'm gonna select my Ubuntu distro. Things are looking good so far, no errors, no problems. And this is a great sign, I can see my user. So I'm gonna log in. Now I can see my official system because I have Belena Etcher here at the background. We know we're back into the correct place. So I'm gonna look at two things. I'm gonna look at, uh, let's just do Gparted. Make sure that things look good. You'll have to enter a password in order to use that. If you don't have it installed, install it. I'm gonna go down to SDA, the one that I just messed with, and look at this. We now are using the full space. I have 110 gigs now available instead of around 60 gigs. I have my swap partition at the end. Confirm that you go down here and you have your swap on. You can also manage any flags, make sure that swap is selected. That shouldn't have changed, but just in case it did, make sure to do those things. Otherwise, you have it all set up. Congratulations if you made it this far. You've successfully resized your root file partition and you moved swap around. One other thing I'll do is check the disks app and I can go down to that disk I just made changes to 
and look at this. It says I have my EFI system. Now I have around 120 gigs available for my root file partition. And I have my swap, which is currently active. Awesome job. This is quite a tricky process for most people. Hopefully you made it through no problem. And I definitely suggest getting rid of that swap partition and making a swap file. That'll just make things easier on you in the future. Anyways, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.